I'm consistently working on not wasting my time, but really tapping into its ability and power. Yes. Oh my goodness. This was a lesson that like, I mean, I'm still learning and refining it, but when I really figured that out, exactly what you said, which is like, well, where is my time best spent? Like what are the actual things that are actually going to move stuff forward and not me posting on Instagram again for the millionth time, something that's just a photo of me dancing and not like any real helpful, valuable content. And I still do that every now and again, but, um, that combined with the discipline to stop for me it was a discipline to stop I understand that for other people it's the discipline to start in that discomfort I don't have a problem there usually like usually I'm pretty like let's just try this let's just go I'm an action taker sounds like you were the same um and probably lots of dancers can relate to that um but the actual discipline of stopping when I'm when I feel like I've got quite a lot of energy. Like I'm kind of in the flow with this. I could really easily work until 10 p.m. But instead, I'm like, no, Jordan's home. We're having dinner. I must stop myself. And I don't always do it. But the more that I do it and the more that I trust it, now I'm like, this actually works. This actually works. And it's the opposite of how I lived. It's the opposite of how I studied at uni. It's the opposite of how I did my master's. Like I did all-nighters. I did all kinds of random stuff when I was in the flow what I thought that meant and now I understand it's a different thing (laughs) it's related but it's different and actually like you said having the discipline to be focused for 25 minutes deeply focused not a bit distracted on Instagram and then I'm doing whatever else but deeply focused and then having the discipline to stand up and walk away and give ourselves perspective on that thing and of course that's not something that we feel is natural because we've been in rehearsals for hours and hours and hours without a break without a going out and like you having a walk around a tree or whatever else and thinking like oh to get more out of life I have to squeeze more out of myself (laughs) and I think that's and thank you for bringing that up that whole structure of um like these drawn out rehearsals like we as human beings only have anywhere between three and five hours in a day where we really are productive and we're able to give And we look at, you know, the eight hour days that have been put in place in like 1826 or something um, to just really complement the the workforce or the workers in in, in big institutions like that, you know, making steel and and, and Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cars. But we have evolved as human beings, right? And we're still expecting people to really, truly function for eight hours in a row. And that's just not who we are. And less is more. Yeah. Let's stay on this point because I love it. And it's so important. So like, just let this sink. If this is kind of new information at the moment, just let this sink in for a moment. Three to five hours a day. That is not only enough that's optimal that's actually optimal because then the next day you come back and you do another three to five hours with equal amounts of energy and enthusiasm I mean there's difference between days sure like other things are going on in our lives but that's how I run my business now and like before I was like that's impossible how on earth am I going to have a successful business working three to five hours a day like that just seems impossible and again it's like you have to Ex- do just do some experimentation until you get new evidence at least that's how I have to do it some people might be better at taking someone else's um promise I'm like no I have to I have to see if this actually is true for myself right. but it's incredible how like you said this is this is not like a life hack or, or something this is literally how we're actually meant to live in a way and so you mentioned there, you know, that say for the last, let's go back like a hundred years, that it was factory work and it was repetitive and it was about more hours, more output. That is so not what our economy now is based off. And like, you know, I totally acknowledge my privilege to be in a position where I get to run my own business and do something that I love, et cetera. But this is what people forget. If you go back 200,000 years to our like original ancestors, they were also not working more than three to five hours. Like, yes, they were collecting the berries and they were digging up this thing and they were taking care of the village and maybe they were fixing a roof or they were 
doing this other thing and maybe there was hunting or whatever else was going on but they also would rest and they would siesta in the sun and they would there was more time that wasn't this like push 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 energy that we have all the time now I mean if they could see us now and they're like you have a fridge with food in it and you're still working eight hours a day what's going on with you guys <laughs> yeah what's wrong with you yeah. Why? <laughs> and I I have to say that I, I think society has really adopted this success has to be hard and if you listen to men that have made it and I'm oh, pull this here they they hustled mm-hmm. they worked their 12 mm-hmm. 14 20 hours and they mm-hmm. still talk about well you got to work hard in order to be successful um and I just went through like I actually took myself out in an accelerator for startups and th- one of the question was to see where you're at and and how fit you are for a founder or being entrepreneurs like are you willing to work 80 hours a week and I'm like no I'm not because I know where that leads yeah um, so I had a conversation with the facilitator saying, Hey, you understand as a founder, you have to put in the extra hours. I was like, I, I understand your mindset and yes. I know where you're coming from, but I do not agree. Yeah. So we had a conversation about it and he wouldn't budge. I didn't budge. Um, and that was my decision point. I was like, Nope, I am not going to put myself into this energy because I know I'm going to rebel so much against it that I won't be able to actually hear the good things that are going to potentially come out of it. Like if you're telling me I will not be successful because I am not willing to put in 80 hours a week, then this is the end for me because I am not willing to give that. Yeah. What another beautiful example of your powerful intuition. And to follow that and be like, oh, I committed to this, but this doesn't feel right. And I'm not doing it anymore. No, I I think that's, that's a gift that we get when we start healing. And when we, when we start understanding that we get to create everything that's in our experience, it's nobody else's job that I don't have to be somebody else for somebody else. I don't have to fit in a container when I meet. 